Hi everybody, thanks for tuning in. Well, we've looked at common mistakes I've made in close focus wide angle with regard to lighting and with regard to focus, obtaining a clear image. In this video, I'm gonna show the most common composition mistakes that I have made with close focus wide angle. So let's check it out. Okay, the first composition mistake is simply not being close enough to the foreground subject. Here, I am just too far away from the foreground subject to exploit the size perspective distortion, and it's boring. Whereas, I moved much closer to the foreground subject, the scorpion fish, and now it looks as large as the diver in the background, a much more compelling image, and one of the things I love about close focus wide angle. Here's another example of a shark, a nurse shark with some divers. That's okay, but as I get closer to the shark, now the shark looks much larger than the divers in the background, much better in my opinion. So if the first one's not close enough, the second one I call use of space. Three things, room to breathe or swim, avoiding amputations, and avoiding mergers. In other words, allowing space between the subject and the background. So here, the diver looks like she's swimming right into the coral. She has no room to breathe. In this image, this is an amputation. The tarpon, the subject in the foreground, his tail's amputated. Otherwise, I like that shot. Here's the other way around. The, I've got the scorpion fish in the foreground. By the way, I'm also too far away. Composition mistake number one. But the diver in the background's amputated. And finally, a merger. The diver has merged with the head of the turtle. There's no space in between. Doesn't look too good. So number one, too far from the foreground subject. Number two, Use of space, giving subjects room to breathe, avoiding amputations, and avoiding mergers. Number three is a simple one, just an unlevel horizon. That always is annoying. If you can see the horizon in general, unless you're trying to show a slope or something, the horizon should be level. And for the last one, I lump this into a category called distractions, okay, of either the foreground or background subjects. Wrong position, direction, or gaze, poor profile, diver exhaling bubbles, or just too much clutter. In this image, the diver and the shark look okay, but they're swimming in opposite directions. That doesn't make any sense. Here, we can see the subject, uh, the ray in the foreground, and the diver in the background, but the diver's not even looking at the ray in the foreground. It doesn't really look right. This is just not good. I happened to catch this image. I took this shot when all three, well, the, the main three dive, divers were exhaling bubbles. Plus, there's a merger of the tarpon and the diver. And this is the last one. This is just too busy of a background. There's just too much going on here. The image doesn't work. So composition mistakes, one, not being close enough to the foreground subject. Two, use of space. Give your subjects room to breathe and avoid amputations and mergers. Number three, keep a level horizon. And number four, avoid distractions, such as the wrong position or direction of a subject, poor profile, bubbles, or too much clutter. Well, it's pretty obvious that I've made quite a few mistakes with my own close focus wide angle underwater photography endeavors. I showed these because hopefully you can learn from them and avoid some of the mistakes I've made with your own underwater photography. Thanks a lot for tuning in.